Hello friends welcome to Movie Flight Channel hopefully you are all well and stay safe. I am so glad you are here. Dear friends please like and subscribe the channel. Also. See the description. Let's start the movie summary. Eiffel Plot Summary. In 1886. Gustav Eiffel was a structural specialist famous all around the world for his works as surprising extensions, towers, and different landmarks. At a semi-public assembling, the man is given a privileged citizenship of the United States of America for having developed the inward design of the Statue of Liberty, which would safeguard it from weighty breezes and tempests. In a little while, he needs to be engaged with the development of a metro station in Paris when two men in his group think of the possibility of a four-legged pinnacle, 200 meters in length. Yet. Gustav is not really dazzled or keen on making something that would be required down 20 years after the fact, and on second thought needs to assemble something helpful and never-ending. To get his metro project endorsed, he would have to meet with the Minister of Commerce, and to arrive at the high-situated man, he reaches out to Antoine de Ristac, a columnist near the service. Gustav and Antoine once used to be colleagues, and the writer promptly welcomes him to a party where the priest would likewise be available. Gustav goes over and has a fruitful presentation with the pastor, yet is totally shocked by meeting Antoine's significant other, Adrienne. At the occasion supper, he can't resist the urge to trade looks with her, and it is clear that the two offer some set of experiences together. Hearing his arrangement to fabricate a metro, the pastor makes light of it, requesting something more notable, and Adrienne concurs, saying that France needs something more bold right now. Prodded by an extreme snapshot of individual memory, Gustav Eiffel guarantees a 300-meter-long pinnacle, put completely together with metal that he would work in Paris, open to all classes of society. What happened between Gustav and Adrienne? In spite of the fact that Gustav denies to have any word with Adrienne in private after the party, he is apparently attracted to the lady as he circumvents her neighborhood to get more looks at her. He meets Antoine, who welcomes him to his home, and Gustav before long winds up slipping into their room, seeing everything having a place with Adrienne which revives his old recollections. Back in 1860, Gustav was in his beginner years expertly, building an extension over the Garonne stream in Bordeaux. A forthright and genuine group pioneer, he had walked up to the neighborhood well off Borja's family, who were part of the way financing the undertaking, requesting more assets to guarantee the security of his laborers. It is here that he initially met Adrienne, the little girl of the patriarch, who had immediately made an association with the youthful designer with her appeal and outgoing individual nature. At her birthday celebration, Gustav attempted to communicate his energy by moving in for a kiss, just to understand that Adrienne was not in total agreement at this point. Leaving the party, infuriated by Adrienne's excusal, he kept no contact with her or her loved ones. In any case, the young lady, obviously, likewise had developing affections for the man, and visited his work quarters a couple of days after the fact, just to be brutally dismissed by him. Unfit to take this affront and realizing that Gustav would hurry to save her, Adrienne bounced into the waterway and was consequently protected by the man. From that point on, the two began an enthusiastic undertaking, utilizing each opportunity to get close. Nonetheless, upon the arrival of the scaffold's introduction, Gustav didn't see his darling, who was supposed to be there, and headed toward her home. He understood that the Borges had been able to know about their issue, as the dad let him know that Adrienne had disappeared and had no aims of wedding him. Albeit stunned at his darling's abrupt turn, Gustav spread the word about it that he would in any case hang tight for her assuming she at any point returned, yet that never occurred, tragically. Throughout the long term, Gustav caused himself to develop further over the occurrence, training himself to be anxious towards the rich and privileged societies, as he accepted Adrienne had deserted him in view of the distinction and friendly class between them. Yet again 26 years after the fact, as of now, Gustav and Adrienne track down chances to draw near to one another even once vulnerably clasping hands at a public get-together, before her better half, Antoine. The spouse becomes careful about this turn of events and goes through Adrian's confidential letters to learn about their issue before. Antoine develops cold towards his close buddy, and on one event, deliberately gets Gustave deferred for a significant gathering to assemble backing and assets. Yet, nothing can discourage the darlings, and Adrian at long last uncovers her side of the story when they subtly meet in a lodging. She had been exceptionally amped up for visiting the initiation and furthermore communicated her desire to get hitched to the designer to her folks. Yet, the guardians were absolutely unconvinced attributable to their elegant legacy. Adrienne then, at that point, uncovered to them that she was pregnant with Gustav's youngster, something that she had not yet told her darling. This prompted her difficult and take off from her home, with her dad pursuing behind to stop her. 
while trying to get around a divider with metal spokes, she unintentionally cut herself in her midsection, frightfully harming herself and furthermore killing the child in her belly. At last, after such a long time, Gustav feels very upset for the doubt he clutched inside his head, and the two sweethearts accommodate. This whole bend likewise shapes Gustav as a person and as a dad in his own life. In spite of the fact that he is inaccessibly persuaded by the decision of Darling by his oldest little girl, he continues to help the young lady and never prevents her from getting hitched to her first love. How did Gustav deliver on his promise of a 300 meters high tower? In spite of the fact that Gustav's underlying plans and plans for the pinnacle to be implicit Paris persuaded specialists and laborers the same to engage in the task, he didn't have going great all through the development stage. Worries about well-being, especially from adjoining territories, about the site of development being right adjacent to the Seine stream, were raised all along. Government authorities likewise reached out, in any case permitted the venture to go on in light of Gustav's energy and his status as a maker of famous landmarks. Certain areas of the populace, including craftsmen, likewise protested the development of such a modern-looking construction in the Paris horizon. Alongside this multitude of difficulties, Gustave's falling apart relationship with the creative writer, Antoine, likewise impacted his status as the press and government authorities began eliminating their help for him, yet, the man's energy knew no closure as he figured out how to urge his laborers to restart development by and by, and this time he played an exceptionally dynamic job all the while. Inside a startlingly brief time frame of half a month, Gustav figured out how to finish the design till a respectable starting point, which guaranteed that he would continue to get government assets to go on with it. Eiffel Landing explained, Do Gustav and Adrienne get to stay together? Adrienne currently confesses all to her significant other about her affection for Gustav and requests to be isolated. Nonetheless, Antoine makes plainly he wouldn't give her leave him access any situation. One evening, they take a carriage and go to meet Gustav at the building site. Calling the designer into the carriage, Antoine lets him know that he won't let his significant other, whom he had acknowledged after her folks had repudiated her, take off with a sweetheart from before. He declared that they would leave Paris soon, and that he could annihilate Gustave's standing by uncovering his insider facts and composing attack against his name. Gustave is obviously sorrowful by this yet has no choice except for to communicate his sentiments through his other love right now, the Pinnacle. The following morning, he arranges that all bolts be supplanted with bolts so the pinnacle can never be dismantled. The development is at long last total, and gigantic groups assemble for its introduction. In the midst of the group, Gustav sees the substance of Adrienne, who has come to hail his energetic work, however before long leaves without connecting with him. As Gustav strolls onto the pinnacle's gallery, the camera surrounds his notepad where he has composed Adrienne's name, with the letter A drawn with the framework of the Eiffel Tower. Gustav clearly makes his landmark at last become a symbol of his affection for Adrienne. There was no conceivable way that he might have had his first love stay with him, thus he chose to communicate his enthusiasm, love, maybe even outrage and dissatisfaction, all through the famous pinnacle that actually lives on as a marker of current modern human progress. There is, obviously, no verifiable proof for the presence of any lady like Adrienne in Gustav's life, in spite of the man having kept a customary record of his life. Nor was Gustav Eiffel a particularly class cognizant man as the film depicts him to be. It is reasonable, however, as the chief takes his own artistic freedom to educate a made-up story of adoration concerning a verifiable man. So thanks viewers.